Today's first house call takes me to a stately suburban neighborhood in the sprawling metropolis of Dallas, Texas. I'm meeting Cynthia Hirsch, who wants to showcase her beautiful home by day and by night. So we'll put in an easy-to-install outdoor lighting system that will make her house glow and sparkle after dark. So just, just sort of show me what, or give me your thoughts as to what you want to do, accomplish here. Well, what I'd like is to see more of the house lit up but in a soft manner. Right now we have some floodlights here and they, they tend to give off an awful lot of light. Now, you got, uh, you got some trees out here. Mm -hmm. This one in particular, this is a nice tree. Mm -hmm. It's a pecan tree. Uh -huh. Any and thoughts of um, illuminating that? Well, it's the largest tree that I have in the front yard, so mm -hmm. I'd like to try and highlight it um, as much as possible. Out here in the driveway, mm -hmm. I noticed a couple of ruts. Looks like people are kind of <laughs> missing the turn out here. Yeah, it seems that uh, my father in particular has trouble turning into my drive and he can't see the actual turn so we end up with uh, sprinkler heads being taken out and my grass often being tromped upon so it would be great to have some lights that at least you know allow people to see where the driveway is but also again be kind of a pathway into the house have it have that estate feel to it. Cynthia and I are going to install an energy efficient low voltage lighting system that should meet all her needs. We first sketch out a plan determining the location and particular lighting requirement needed for each section of the yard. I suggest we use several ground level well lights to cast a soft glow on the front of the house. We'll also use one of these fixtures for the pecan tree as well. To accentuate a pair of smaller trees in the front yard, we'll use vertical beam lights. They're similar to the well lights, but cast a more directional beam. Finally, we'll line the driveway with decorative lanterns. Now this is the power supply for your low voltage lighting system. We're going to mount it on the outside of the, uh, of the house right here. And it's what makes low voltage lighting so safe because it reduces the household current, 110 volts, down to 12 volts. And uh, we want to mount this on the wall up here. It needs to be at least 12 inches above the ground. I think we'll put this one right up here. So let's start by taking the mounting bracket. We'll mount the bracket right in the mortar joint where it's easier to drill holes. I make a couple of starter holes with a spring-loaded center punch and then use a carbide-tipped masonry bit to drill holes. After inserting lead anchors, we attach the mounting bracket with screws. There's some slots in the back. And that's it. Excellent. Okay. Mm -hmm. Next, we attach the low-voltage electrical cable to the terminals on the power supply. One cable will carry power to the lanterns along the driveway and well light under the pecan tree. The cable will then cross the driveway and power the vertical beams under the small trees as well as additional lanterns on the other side of the driveway. A second cable will carry low voltage current to the well lights flooding the front of the house and nearby lanterns. Now we want to run some wire along the edge of the driveway right here. Here's Using a garden spade, we pry up the sod just enough to tuck the wire neatly out of sight and then gently push the grass back into place. To uplight this tree, we're going to use this. This is called a well light. It actually is buried into the ground and it's flush, which is a big advantage when you're mowing it long. You don't have to take it out. Okay. Uh, a couple things to keep in mind as far as placement goes. Generally speaking, this needs to be about three or four feet from the trunk. But also, you want to kind of look up and pick a spot on the tree that will allow the light to go as far up into the tree as possible, all right? So I'm thinking that maybe about right here. We use a clamshell post hole digger to dig holes for the light fixture. Who needs that exercise equipment in the, in the house, huh? Next, we again use the spade to cut a wedge-shaped groove in the sod, then insert a short length of cable and press the sod back into place. Then we place the light into the ground. Yeah, that's good. And connect it to the power cable with a connector that has sharp prongs that bite through the insulation, making contact with the wire inside as the top ring is screwed down. Once the cables are connected together, we fill in the space around the light with sand. Now this is the fixture you've picked out for the uh, driveway here, the path light. I like that very much. Mm -hmm. um, now there's a couple of rules about spacing on these. They need to be about 10 feet apart, at least 10 feet apart. Okay. And generally speaking, this part of the lamp right here should be set back from the edge of the driveway at least six inches so cars don't hit it. So I think uh, overall, if we're back about 14 inches or so, 
That'd be about right. So about right there. These couldn't be simpler to install. Just simply push the stake into the ground like that. Now we've got to get the wire from here over to here. And that's simple enough to do. We'll go back to our shovel. And if you could come around on this side, Cynthia. Okay. Okay, our wire's coming down here. And then it comes over here to the well light and then continues down here to the path light that we put in. Right. Now we have a small problem. We've got to cross your driveway here. So to do that, we're going to take advantage of this expansion joint. This is put in to keep the concrete from cracking. And what we're going to do is pry this out. We remove the wooden strip from the joint and are left with an ideal trench for running a cable across the driveway. One. Okay, Cynthia, just lay the cable now right in the bottom of the expansion joint. Okay. Here's a new piece of expansion material. We'll lay that right on top. Check to be sure that it's flush. Looks pretty good, huh? We fill any gaps on the sides of the strips with sand and use a broom to work it into the crevices, then sweep away the excess. Having bridged the driveway, we can now light the smaller trees on the opposite side. Now this is a 20 watt halogen vertical beam light. That's going to uplight this small tree right here. Why don't you go ahead and put this in. About okay. six inches from the trunk would be about right. We want to cast a lot of illumination on the trunk itself. Next, we move on to the front of the house. To flood the front walls of the house with light, we're going to use these 50 amp halogen well lights once again. And these have a sealed beam so that even though water may collect on the surface right here, it won't damage the light. Well, everything's in. Uh, you like the fixtures? I think they look great. Yeah, they go really well with the house. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to have to wait, I'd say, maybe another hour or so to get the full effect here. We're also installing a light sensor, which will automatically turn the system on and off. Now, you can mount this anyway, but the important thing is you want to avoid mounting this in heavily shadowed areas or areas where you have artificial uh, lighting at night. In this okay. case, this spot will be fine. So let's put we right can up. choose a dusk to dawn schedule or set it to remain on for a specified number of hours after dusk. To complete the installation, we'll pop on the cover and plug the unit in. Cynthia's new lights are low voltage, but they have a megawatt impact that makes her home glow and sparkle.